How's it going, campers? Matt Sardo, Monkeys Fighting Robots. Um, YouTube has this like new thing now. If you hit the subscribe button or you smash the like button, there's like crazy animation. So if you see that happen, um, let me know. Comment below and be like, hey, I saw this cool thing by YouTube. Uh, but we need to talk about Punisher number one, which drops from Marvel today. David Pepos is the writer. Uh, David Watcher is the artist. You have Dan Brown as colors, and Corey Pettit is the letterist on this, and he does some amazing stuff. The colors and letters and the art are spectacular, uh, but I have to do like a little like brief history on the Punisher for me. Like I was, uh, you know, I was in my teens when I was reading like Punisher War Journal and Punisher back in the day in the late '80s and early '90s. And as a kid, I was like, "Oh my god, this is crazy! He's insane, bad guy slash good guy doing some insane things." Like that was like the trinity of Marvel at the time of Wolverine, Ghost Rider, and Punisher being in everything and being the anti-hero and being like, oh, "I'm gonna kill the bad guy because this bad guy killed the bad guy." And Spider-Man being like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna kill the bad guy. You know, we gotta just gotta stand trial." Or Captain America being like, "All right, we, I'm the I'm the Boy Scout. We gotta do these things." And then you know you got Wolverine and Punisher and Ghost Rider being like, "Shing shing, boom boom boom." <laughs> And bad guys go bad guy. Uh, bad, go, bad guys go bye-bye. I was thinking about this. Punisher just hits completely different now that I'm an adult with a wife and family. Because, I mean, back in the day, like, I, had, I was just a kid. And I didn't have a wife and a family. And the Punisher's wife and family, like, get slaughtered. And you build off of that. And, like, I think about it now. The Punisher is just a really depressing tale. It's interesting how that's going to translate into like modern times, like to now, like how is this book going to hit me now? I was also thinking about action revenge tales and the ones that work really well are the ones that emotionally torture you in the beginning to where you get to a primal state. And then like you're cheering in the theater as the so uh, pseudo good guy kills the bad guy. And you're like, yeah. And and that's that's a crazy emotional uh, journey that you go on where you walk into a theater uh, and you're a normal human being. And then by the end, you're this primal savage that's cheering uh, the death of a bad guy. And uh, we all go through it. It's fine. We're all we're all we're all part of it. Uh, and, you know, they mentioned that this movie, that this comic book is John Wick meets the fugitive. I'm not the hugest fan of them putting that on there. Because, um, you know, my opinion, John Wick is the first one is pretty spectacular, amazing. And again, I talk about that emotional turmoil in the beginning that gets you to this primal state where you want to see the bad guy just get like slaughtered. Uh, John Wick does it really well. His wife dies of cancer. She gives him, gives John a puppy dog and then the bad, dirty Russians kill the puppy dog. So his like wife kind of dies twice and they kill his dog. And then you're just like, yeah, just slaughter, slaughter all the Russians that were associated with this. Like, it's just bad news bears. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I didn't watch that movie for the longest time. Because, like, I didn't want to see them kill the dog. I was like, no, I know the dog's going to die, so I'm not watching this at all. Um, but then I eventually did see it because it was in the th theaters forever. Um, and then I was like, okay, I finally got to go see it. And I was like, I closed my eyes. They killed the dog. And I was like, all right, let's go kill everybody. And that's kind of like you get to this primal state with, with uh, revenge tales uh, as a viewer. And it's, it's crazy. I wonder if there, there's gotta be like college papers on why people are crazy uh, about this kind of stuff. And it, you think about that, you know, how many times have you guys like cheered in a theater about, you know, something, something bad happening to the bad guy. You know, uh, I know I've cheered in Rocky movies. I know I've cheered. Uh, I, I know we cheered in saving private Ryan when they killed the first German uh, because every, all the Americans just got slaughtered. And then when they killed the first German, the whole theater was like, yeah, uh, I mean, like, and, and so it's just a weird, weird thing. And again, um, now that I have a wife and kids, uh, Punisher just hits completely different. And also we've been doing this revenge tale for a very long time. So let's now set this like revenge tale in the Marvel universe and see what David can do uh, with that story. And I think there are a lot of elements that work really well where the character gets his gadgets from and where the character is coming from. And then his sidekick, like it all makes sense inside of the Marvel universe. And I think it works really well. What I think I need a little bit more from is 
that emotional side of the main character and the reasons why I'm going to get my primal, where my primal anger is going to come from. I, I don't think they got me angry enough yet to want to be on this revenge tale. And it's only the first issue, which is fine. Uh, and, and then this makes me think about how we consume media and how we consume comic books. Uh, you know, do I need, you know, an 80 page giant instead of a 40 page book so that I get all the things I need? I mean, now that I'm like, I'm on with Hulu and Netflix and all things like, I'm like, oh, let's, let's just watch multiple of these things. And then you get this big, huge viewing experience. This really gets me in the psychology of, of media, uh, you know, humans and, and anger. And like, I'm really like take going down a wormhole, uh, with this book because I find it so intriguing that the emotions that David and David, David, Dan and Corey are trying to invoke, uh, with the reader on this. And, and, um, it's very interesting. It's super interesting. Uh, the artwork is spectacular. And I also do like the format that Pepos uses in the beginning of the book where there's there's multiple stories happening at once or there's kind of like narrations of the past and the future is going on right now. And I will, I will grab this, the preview uh, that they sent us. And it doesn't have all the cool... Oh, oh, I'm looking at a really cool page right now from the actual comic book. Uh, I do like the B-list, C-list villain that shows up at the end. I think that works really well. I look at page one. This works for horror films. This works for dark action. The black gutters really make this work so well. Uh, Dave's artwork and uh, Dan's colors are just bonkers good. I think they are they are uh, they are they are like this. They are together. They they see a vision and they are making that vision work really well. You have these detectives here and they are like in the current story, but then you have the narration of the current Punisher character and i do like that they you know the the character that they're calling the punisher was like dismissing that he is the punisher and i think it works that they're like yeah this isn't a punisher this isn't a punisher book that's not a punisher book like i i like that a lot but i do like these nice cinematic panels and then a big reveal of the detectives front and center uh and then the color palette i yeah, they I mean like it it's so jazzy like the reds and the purples you know if you think about emotional attachments and where you are and like the red's kind of like angry and there's like a smoldering going on there. And then you have a building in the background that's actually smoldering, but like emotionally you're smoldering and you're, there's like a buildup. And then on page two, you have like this nice long panel, which kind of gives you this, again, I Todd McFarlane did it really well with these nice long panels where you're kind of like looking down and you're, it slows you down. I think in the reading experience, cause you're like, because you read across and you're like, do, 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 do. But then you get a long panel that goes down. It kind of slows you down and you feel the impact of what just happened there. And then you have, you go to the panel to the right, you have this nice like, rectangle and the point of view is coming uh, below the body's body up to the detective. So like the body is front and center. You come back to this other detective and then the way the diagonal works, it's right to the teddy bear. And you're like, oh, look, there's 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 an adult and then there's a kid that died. Like just looking at what happened and then you have the reveal of the bomb, which kind of fades the angle that fades the page turn. And then the page turn goes to a different story. And then you have this like bright red and blues, but in black is is just in your face. The darkness is in your face. And I, I now that we have modern day coloring, like blues really pop in dark colors. Like it's it's it electric. The electricity in it is is really exciting. Uh, you see a little taste of of Corey's letter work, and this is just a tip of the iceberg of the amazing stuff that he does in the book. Then you have this thin panel which pops the red, which makes the page stand out, and then at the bottom of the page you have like the red, call back to the red, and I think that works really well. The way the panel is set up, it's angled and you're kind of like leaning towards the page turn. And then you like have these nice little close visuals of hands and what's happening in action moments. And you're like, okay, 
Dave really knows what he's doing with action. So it's like the tension is building up with these like slow little, with these small little close-ups of hands. You're like, okay, if he's doing this with like lighting a cigar and pulling the plug out of a jukebox, what is he going to do when the shit actually hits the fan? There's a nice tension built with these three panels going across. And then you're like the reveal of, oh shit, who's this guy with the red light? It's a, a faceless person and you're like oh and then you have like the villains and what the shit and then you have the reveal of the punisher logo or the new punisher logo and i'm like ah it's on i was also like is he using lasers with those laser guns and then it all makes sense later on in the book and that's where they kind of leave you with the preview of this the punisher before the shit hits the fan and it is a very action packed book. I was I was very impressed with all the action that was going on there. I'm I'm excited for issue 2 cuz I don't know where it's going. I I think they leave you in issue 1 where they're like okay, this is where I thought we were going and now we're going in a different direction and I don't know where that direction's going. Which which is good because I usually solve the mysteries before they happen. So overall Punisher number one is worth the price of admission based on artwork alone. The artwork, the colors, the lettering is spectacularly done. It really makes me want to check out uh, Dave's turtle work because uh, I was flipping through to see what he worked on in the past. And I was like, "Ooh, I want to see what he did with turtles now that I've seen what he did with the Punisher. Uh, there's a lot of elements going on that work really well with this story to engage me and hook me in. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, how David Pepos uh, really um, turns the emotional tension up in the upcoming issues, because I think he he turned it up, he you know, turned it up a little bit, but I'm really excited for when he gets to 11, because I think that's where like you're gonna be like, oh shit, uh, I can't wait until we kill the villain, and yeah. If you read Punisher number one, let me know in the comments below. Again, um, YouTube's got this new thing now where if you smash the like button or you subscribe, there's supposed to be some sort of animation. Let me know if you see that. I think there's supposed to be some sort of animation when I say the word subscribe to our channel. I don't know. Uh, but let me know in the comments below if you see any of that stuff. Let me know what other books you're reading this week uh, and have a great new comic book day.